Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are having a wonderful day. I am W2Best and I make videos about tech travel and inspiration. Right now I am out traveling and I have arrived in Amsterdam after getting all the way from Barcelona to Montpellier then to Paris and finally today hit Amsterdam. Tomorrow I'm continuing towards Hamburg and Copenhagen before I go home to Gothenburg where I live. If you are new around here, I would be super happy to see you as a subscriber to the channel. I'm trying to put out content as frequently as possible when I have interesting things to share. So if you want to subscribe, you'll get all of the content that I'm putting out there in the upcoming future. In this video, I wanted to talk to you about a laptop that a commenter on one of my videos was making me aware of its existence. This is the MSI Prestige 15. Before this person commented on the video, I haven't even seen that this laptop existed. So I'm really happy that I got to know about this because it seems like it could be one of the most interesting offers on the market right now and a very close competitor to the Dell Inspiron 15 7000 that I've been making a lot of videos about, to be fair. Let's have a look at why I think this is such an interesting machine. This is the sales page of the MSI Prestige 15. As you can see, they are going for a very visual creativity style on the landing page of this laptop. And for good reasons, they are definitely targeting creatives with this kind of machine. The first thing they pitch is how it's inspired by aesthetics. What started as a vision became a reality. It's crafted with diamond cut edge and sandblasted texture with high quality material designed to be unique and still elegant. I think it's pretty good looking, but maybe not the most good looking laptop on the market. It features the 10th generation Intel Core i7 processor, uh, and that is a six core processor. I was gonna say, I'm guessing it is an age processor, but actually from here, it says that it's a U processor which is quite interesting. So it's actually not a 45 watt chip, but a 15 watt processor in this machine. That makes it a little less powerful than uh, a lot of the machines that have 45 watt chips in them. There's a lot of uh, spectacular going on here. Spectacular screen, uh, battery life, uh, design. I mean, I'm not super sure about it, but I guess uh, it, it looks okay, the screen looks good. It's hard to tell when you haven't seen the laptop yet. Uh, it can lay flat 180 degrees, so you can put it down onto a table. It's 1.6 kilograms, which is almost exactly the same as the Dell Inspiron 15 7000, even a little bit lighter actually. Thin bezels, 90% screen to body ratio. That looks really good. Webcam is still up on top, which is a very good thing. Here is the thing that you can put it down to share the content that is on screen. This is not available on Dell Inspiron 15 7000. We come down to the USB called Connect and Charge. This computer comes with two Thunderbolt 3 ports. That is really interesting because I don't think there are any lightweight laptops like this that come with two Thunderbolt 3 ports, but that also have the other ports like real USB-A ports, like a full HDMI port, like a micro SD card reader. A lot of the Lenovo's, for example, they come with like two USB-C ports and one USB-A port, and that's it. No micro SD card reader, no SD card reader, no HDMI port, there's nothing. There's just a USB-C and one USB-A. Same goes for Huawei. They also come with two USB-C ports, and one USB-A port. So that setup I'm not very fond of. This looks a lot better. Two USB-C ports with Thunderbolt and then a micro SD card slot on the right side as well. I think this is promising. Next USB, a touchpad you'd want to use. Extra large touchpad for multi-finger gestures. More responsive, more accurate and silky smooth to the touch. Let's just say this, that MSI's strength has never been touchpads. Maybe they have become better, but the MSI that I had before, the touchpad was definitely the weakest point of the laptop. I also tried the next generation of MSIs and there were still pretty bad touchpads. So I don't really trust MSI when they say they have amazing touchpads, 
But we'll see how this one is. Maybe they are improving. I don't know about it. A keyboard made for you. The MSI GS73VR that I had had a very long travel keyboard. I really enjoyed typing on that keyboard. It was amazing, but it had a very annoying layout for me as I'm used to using Nordic keyboards. I want the enter key to be a full size. In this keyboard, the enter key is half size. And from what you can see here, it's still a half size enter key. Although this is not a Nordic keyboard, but I assume it's still gonna be this half size enter key. And I personally just can't type very well on a half size enter key. I use the enter key too much to be able to adjust to it being in a different layout than what you're actually used to with the keyboards you use the most. 1.5 millimeter key travel seems decent actually. So I hope this is a little bit more key travel than the last generation, the GS65 and GS75, because I really didn't like the way that the travel of the keyboard was on those models. So I hope they are aiming for a little bit more travel in this model. You have some security features. For example, there is a fingerprint reader that is part of the touchpad. I would have preferred it to be part of the power button. Still, I think it's a good thing that it actually has a fingerprint reader. My Dell Inspiron 15 7000 is supposed to be equipped with a fingerprint reader, but when I ordered it, which was very early after it was released, it was not available to order with the fingerprint reader. Then we have Cooler Boost, which is one of the features MSI are usually pitching for their laptops. I have had a computer with Cooler Boost, and I can tell you 100% sure that was the hottest laptop I have ever used in my life. So don't take anything for its word when it comes to cooling a thin and light machine like this. You've also seen my videos about the Dell Inspiron 15 7000 and how hard it is for this machine to cool off its components. I don't really trust any manufacturer when it comes to cooling components in a thin and light machine. This is equipped with a GTX 1650 Max-Q, so it's a little bit less power consuming than a full size GTX 1650. Maybe the configuration of a Max-Q graphics card and a 15 watt CPU will actually be a bit easier to cool than the full size GTX 1650 and the 45 watt CPU that is in my Dell Inspiron 15 7000. We'll have to wait and see what other testers will find when they try out the temperature and the temperature handling of this MSI Prestige 15. Creator Center is something that I haven't seen before. They say Creator Center takes optimization to the next level with easily adjustable system modes and resources for a wide range of scenarios and needs. I guess this means that you can apply like priorities to what program is getting the most resources out of the machine. So if you're running a video rendering, for example, you want that to take all of your RAM and all of your graphics and all of your CPU and maybe save a tiny, tiny bit for if you're browsing or sending a message or an email or whatever, but most of it should always go to the rendering. Same if you are editing a video, same if you're editing a photo or playing a game, most of your resources should be allocated to that task. I'm just assuming this is something like this, but I'm not sure. It's a relatively new feature, I think. Then we have the monitoring, which has always been part of MSI's own apps. It used to be called Dragon Center in the gaming laptop, so maybe Creator Center is the equivalent of Dragon Center. Military grade durability. Okay, so you can drop it then, presumably, but I wouldn't really put that to the test. Quick summary of the specification. 10th generation i7 processor, Windows 10 Home or Pro, 1650 Max-Q, 1 1.6 kilograms and 16 millimeters thick, 4K screen or a full HD screen, close to 100% sRGB on the full HD screen and 100% Adobe RGB on the 4K screen and up to 16 hours of battery life. That last thing I don't trust at all. 
I don't think this kind of computer can run up to 16 hours, but who knows, maybe with a 15 watt CPU and this little bit uh, toned down Max-Q uh, GPU, maybe it's possible to run it for like 10 to 15 hours. So we're gonna see how you can spec this computer to make it as good as possible for your needs. The 10th generation Intel Core i7 U processor. So it's clear here that it's not an H processor and I repeat then it's a 15 watt chip. You can get it either with Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro. You have 15.6 inch either Full HD or Ultra HD panels. And as I said before, a little bit higher quality reproduction in the 4K model there. It comes with a GeForce GTX 1650 Max-Q with 4 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. It comes with DDR4 2666 megahertz memory. There are two slots and it could be maxed out at 64 gigabytes. This is pretty cool, although 32 gigabyte memory modules are really expensive so equipping it with this will probably be a very costly upgrade but still there are two slots and you can then definitely equip it with your own ram module so you don't have to equip it from the start next thing very interesting there is one m2 ssd slot nvme pcie generation 3 then there is one m2 ssd combo slot that could be used either with NVMe PCIe Gen 3 or SATA. So this is super interesting. This one actually has two M2 slots. The same way as the Dell Inspiron 15 7000, you can put an extra storage SSD in there. So I could take my 2GB SSD and put that into the MSI Prestige as well. This is amazing, this is not something that has been part of a lot of laptops before and I love to see this being part of more laptops, for example this one from MSI. Webcam, 30fps, 720p, it's the normal shitty webcam that will not be very impressive for any kind of use but it will probably be okay for your occasional Skype conversation. You have a backlight keyboard that is single color white backlight, so no gaming RGB fancy perky lighting here. We have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. This is really good. Wi-Fi 6 is probably going to be implemented in more and more computers coming up over this upcoming year. And Wi-Fi 6 is supposed to be quite a bit faster than previous generations of Wi-Fi. Also, Bluetooth version 5 is super solid and gives much longer transfer speeds than what the Bluetooth generation 4 4.2 used to give. So I'm really excited about having Bluetooth 5 in computers to be able to use, for example, wireless headphones and not be in close proximity to your computer all the time. You have audio 2 times 2 watt speakers. MSI are really not well known for high audio quality, so I assume these speakers are not going to be very good, but we'll have to wait and see how they sound when we can test that out. You have a microphone in headphone out combo jack. So no separate ones as the other MSIs have used to have before. Then you have the I.O. which is two type C ports with Thunderbolt and power delivery charging. You have two regular USB A ports. You have a micro SD card reader and you have a HDMI connector with 4K at 60 Hertz. That's a really solid port setup. I am impressed to see this in this laptop from MSI. Moving down to the battery. We have a 4 cell battery of 82 watt hours. So comparing that to the 97 watt hours that I have in Dell Inspiron 15 7000, this is a slightly weaker capacity battery, but also it has weaker components. So it should be able to drive the computer a very long time because it's such a large battery. Maybe not the full 15 hours that they specify, but probably not so far from it because 82 watt hour is a very big battery. We have a 90 watt AC adapter coming with the computer and this one is a USB-C AC adapter. So you are charging it with USB-C and that's the only way you charge it. There's no barrel connector in this one. So it's interesting to see that this one could be driven with a 90 watt charger. 
because that speaks for itself when it comes to how powerful the components are. With a 15 watt CPU and a little bit weaker 1650 GPU with a max Q configuration, you are actually able to probably use a 90 watt USB-C adapter and still run the computer at full blast and being able to charge the battery at the same time. While on a 45 watt CPU and a full on 1650 chip, this would probably not be possible on a 90 watt USB-C charger. Although I have tried it and I didn't deplete the battery, but I also didn't charge the battery when I was using my 90 watt charger while playing a game on high settings on my Dell Inspiron 15 7000. The dimensions are written in millimeters, which is quite hard to read out. 356.8 millimeters times 233.7 millimeters times 15.9 millimeters. I assume 15.9 is then at the thickest point, but it looks like it could be a little bit thinner at the thinnest point, but I'm not sure about this fact. The weight is stated with battery at 1.6 kilograms, which is a very fair weight for a 15 inch computer with this kind of configuration and this kind of I.O. that it has. So how much does it cost? Let's have a quick look at the US retailers and see what they ask for this machine. B&H Photo actually sells this computer and this is the 15.6 inch version, 1.1 gigahertz, that sounds like it's wrong almost, but an i7 6 core processor, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes SSD, and a full HD display with the GTX 1650. This one comes in at $1,399. So about $1,400 is the price for this, which is probably kind of a base model in this case. Then you can upgrade it with another storage unit if you want, and you can upgrade the RAM if you want. I was looking for pictures of how the upgradability is of this computer, I couldn't find a perfect picture, but from what I read, it's actually not like it's been with MSI before, that you need to get to the bottom of the motherboard to be able to upgrade it. You actually open up the lid and you have both the extra SSD available there and the two RAM slots available there, which is an amazing change. This has never been possible with an MSI computer before. It's been a very big hassle to upgrade them. I was also having a quick look at this Swedish site where it's sold just to see how it differs between the different markets when it comes to price. Here we also have the 1.1 gigahertz uh, 6 core processor i7. We have 16 gigabytes RAM, 2 times 8 gigabytes sticks, 512 gigabyte SSD, full HD screen and the GTX 1650. And this one in Sweden comes in at 16,990 crowns, which is equivalent to like 1,600 euros approximately. So it's a bit more expensive than the US version for sure, but this sometimes only comes down to sales tax. The sales tax in Sweden is 25%. The sales tax in many states in the US is like 7% or 9%. And often it's not even stated the sales tax on the pages it is added in a later stage in the purchase process. So that might be the reason why it differs a lot. On this sales page, you can also click to the eighth generation version of this, which is actually PS63. So I didn't realize before, but the Prestige 15 is the new model of the PS63. And it's just upgraded with being without the barrel connector, but instead having two Thunderbolt ports, one for power and one for other connectivity. And then it makes a lot of sense because the PS63 was always a creator's laptop that used U processors but had a really strong graphics card in the 1650 line. At the moment, this is all I have to say about the Prestige 15. There is also the Prestige 14, which I will probably make another video about in one of the upcoming days. But this is definitely one of the most interesting laptops on the market right now. And I would love to get my hands on one to be able to try it out a little bit more to see how it copes with temperatures. And if it can cool off the components well, I think this is 
a super interesting machine. It definitely has the inputs and outputs that you need, and it has that extra M2 slot that makes it super versatile the same way as the Dell Inspiron 15 7000. Hope you enjoyed this video about MSI Prestige 15. If you want to see more of my content, please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. Have a really nice day. Bye-bye.